York City, and we're gonna ensure, we're gonna ensure the families of Akai Gurley, Patrick Dorisman, Sean Bell, um, Amadou Diallo, and the list goes on. We're gonna ensure those families know in the city council that we are staunch adv advocates for them and we wanna create change. I wanna thank Majority Leader Lori Cumble for being here today and the plethora of council members that push forward bills to ensure that the chokehold is illegal here in New York City. Give those council members a round of applause. They worked very hard on that legislation. So now without further ado, we're gonna put on some music real quick, DJ, and I am gonna announce to you a man from Brooklyn, from New York City, that is all about black love, black respect, black value. Without further ado, I would like to introduce to you all rapper Papoose. Peace and love, y'all. Black is beautiful, y'all. Black is beautiful. Hey, listen. When I created this song, it broke my heart that I was able to name a person from A to Z who was murdered by police brutality slash racism. So at this time, I just want everybody to just put your peace signs up in the air for everybody we lost to the injustice. And I'm gonna just try to get through this song because honestly, it broke my heart that I was able to write this song, but I wanted to tribute everybody who we lost. Let's go. Start from A, I'm gonna work my way through it. One more time, y'all, put your feet down, y'all, come on. Hey, I'm a dude, the owl was shot 19 times. The police fired 41 shots combined. Mistaken identity, they had to admit it. When they went to trial, all four officers got acquitted. Ahmaud Aubrey, his skin made him a target. Two racist white men shot him while he was jogging. Betty Jones was inside of a house the day after Christmas when shots rang out. A bullet traveled inside of a home and slaughtered up. No charges were filed against the officer. Cornelius Brown, cops chose to kill. They shot him seven times. He was mentally ill. Dominic Fuller was murdered. It gets stranger. They say he had a gun. All he had was a state love. Eric Garner, he was a father. But now a martyr, ain't deserved to be slaughtered. His last words, I can't breathe. Moment of silence. The officer who killed him didn't even get indicted. And until 14 years old, they claim he flirted with a white woman. How cold? They took off his clothes, called him a nigga, lynched him and threw him in the Tallahassee River. Freddie Gray had a spinal Four seven, killed in a police van after arrested. Six officers got charged. This is ridiculous. Two years, four trials, no convictions. Three officers nailed on him, he told him he couldn't breathe, they didn't care for him. The country rioting everywhere for him. Fuck those cops, I have no fear for him. Hector Morwan, he was unarmed, the cops shot him dead, he cried for his mom. India Kaga, Navy vet, the passenger in a vehicle was a suspect. Her baby in the back seat, the cops started shooting. The officers were clear the criminal wrongdoing. Jamal Clark, restraint wasn't enough. They shot him in his head while he was in handcuffs. Cal Coppin was mentally ill, but they say he had a gun. All he had was a hairbrush. The cops shot him, a king with a coroner. No charges were filed against the officer. Laquan McDonald was jaywalking. They shot him to the ground, murdered without a warning. Alleged that he pulled a knife and tried to rush him. The video proved they lied. How disgusting. Mike Brown, the suburbs of Ferguson, allegedly a cop drove by. He had words with him. The cop shot him. Nothing wrong. Why did they have to kill him? The man was unarmed. Nathaniel you pick it, rest heavenly. He was brutally murdered by a sheriff deputy. 
Oscar Grant, the world knows his name. He was traveling, the cops grabbed him off the train, placed him on his knees, laid him on his chest, then shot him in his back. May he peacefully rest. Philando Castillo traffic stop. He was legally strapped, he informed the cop. The officer got nervous, a murder was committed. Charged with racism, but he got acquitted. LeGrand called the cops three different times before he got shot. Allegedly, they say he charged at him with a bat. But since he made the call, it's hard to believe that. Rodney King, they beat him with Billy Clubs. They blame us, but the cops are really dogs. The verdict was not guilty. How shifty. That sparked the Vicks riot scene since the 60s. Sandra Bland, traffic stop. The racial profiling of us has to stop. Three days later, she was hanging in a the cell. They ruled it a suicide. The truth shall prevail. Terrence Franklin was cornered in the basement. He tried to surrender, got executed by hatred. The U stands for the unknown. Who died by racism, their faces weren't shown. Victor LaRussa, they thought he had one. But after they killed him, they never found the gun. Walter Scott, the world loves you. The cops said he feared for his life in the scuffle. The video proved he lied, revealed facts. He ran for his life, eight shots in his back. Xavier Rove, he was riding his bike. Point blank range, they shot him and took his life. Yusuf Hawkins was shot down in 1989 by some racist clowns. The male Crawford was chased to his death. Rammed into a wall, he took his last breath. Zimmerman, I know you think you got away with it, but everyone has karma, yours gonna be my favorite. Peace and love, y'all. Put your peace signs up for everybody. We lost the police brutality, y'all. One time. Peace, y'all. Boom. Round of, round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Now we'll have Ezra Peen for our remembrance portion. Good afternoon. As I stand before you today, I am filled with mixed emotions. However, I am not delusional as to what is going on in the world. America is at war. Those of us who are colored are literally fighting for our lives every single day. As I stand here, confusion and anger has me upset. I'm perplexed at the pigmentation of my skin automatically makes me an endangered species. Living in this so-called land of the free, when did the color of my skin make me a threat to society? As a young black woman, no, an African-American woman, I'm tired of constantly having to prove myself to others that I belong. I belong to this melting pot of diversity where my skin is a factor, but my character speaks volumes. I'm tired of trying to belong to a society where my color should not speak for me, instead my intellect should speak of me. The empowering, the em that empowering myself should not be met with disdain or pain, for my, al my attitude allows me to go altitudes beyond these planes. So no, I am not a thug, I am not a criminal, I am not uneducated or trying to get over. I am a human being that should not be treated like an animal. The world has been shaken and awakened. It's at war with itself. It's disgusted with what it has become. A land of hate, racism, and injustice. Lady Justice still covers her eyes because of so much matched injustice. Guess what, America? We will no longer sit idly by while our men and women are killed without any form of justice. America, you will no longer be sanctioned to violate our civil rights. We are awakened. My generation, Generation Z, this generation is awakened and our voices will no longer be irrelevant or ignored. We are everywhere. We are yelling and screaming. 
Listen closely and hear the voices of our ancestors echoing in our chants for peace. Hear through the chants what we are really saying. We are demanding justice, peace, equality, and real police reform. America, when will it be okay to jog in a neighborhood? America, when will you stop beating those you arrest? America, when will you arrest the cops that kill our people? America, when will we be able to breathe? America, when will you become great? There are 45 reasons America is the way it is. There are 45 reasons that sit in the White House spewing hate, anger, and malice. But come November, we must get out and vote so that 45 can no longer continue to feed hate with more hate. I stand here today as an educated black woman. I stand here today as an educated black woman with a hard work ethic that pushes me to want more than what is presented to me. This generation deserves more. We are tired of what we are being offered. Today on June 19, 2020, we commemorate the day that African Americans were freed from slavery. That's where Juneteenth comes from. It's supposed to be a day that we celebrate with great joy, but yet here we are, 155 years later, still fighting for our freedom. We want change and we want it now. I will not stop. We will not stop until justice is served and equality is no longer a word, but an actual reality. At this time, I am asking everyone to join us in solidarity for a moment of silence by raising your left fist in the air while we remember, the, while we remember all the lives that were taken due to police brutality.
Ladies and gentlemen, um, Council Member Lewis encourages you to uh, put on your uh, mask. If you have your mask, put your mask. Um, we'd like you to put your hands together for Brooklyn United.
this is the reason why we need to ensure summer youth employment, Cornerstone, Beacon, Sonic, Compass. We need to ensure that the administration provides funding so that organizations like Brooklyn United can provide programming to our young people here in New York City. So give them another round of applause. They work really, really hard year round. I know you see them at the Barclays and everywhere else. So we're about to come to an end. I'm gonna introduce you really quickly to Samuel Darwin. He is the founder of an organization called Haitian American Caucus, and he's here to provide a few remarks. Join us. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Nah, y'all don't, y'all don't believe that. Black Lives Matter. One more time, Black Lives Matter. What they don't understand is that this was absolutely bigger than George Floyd. Yes, it was. It was absolutely bigger than George Floyd. What we saw on that pavement in Minneapolis was our brothers, our sons, our grandsons, our nephews on that pavement being trialed and executed at the very, very same time. But you know what? I can just hear. I can just hear our ancestors telling us, keep on going. I can just hear them saying, keep this fight going. Keep this fight, do not let up, do not let this go because this is the time for change. Dr. King did it, Rosa Parks did it, and I'm so excited to see so many young kids here. What will they say about us? What will we prepare for them for that they can live in a better society, in a just society where they are not judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character? Keep on going. But guess what? Guess what, New York? Guess what, New York? Early voting has already started. June 23rd, we are going to those polls. June 23rd, we are going to those polls. And my God, come November, <laughs> come November, come November, I don't care if those polls are closed, you stay there and have your voice be heard. We're excited today. We're excited and I urge all of you guys to keep this going, mentor, Mentor a young person. Tell them what you have been through. Tell them your struggles and tell them how they can be the best that they can be. I want to thank all the elected officials who are, who are part of this, making this Juneteenth a major, 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 major success. Thank you guys for your hard work. Thank you guys for all of your dedication. There are certain things we cannot just stand by and look because at some point, our silence becomes a issue. Our silence becomes complacent. So I urge you guys to stay motivated and to stay encouraged. Do not forget their names, because guess what? Black lives mattered back in the day, they matter today, and they'll matter in the future. I am excited, we're gonna welcome our council member. Farrell Lewis, who, have been, who has been doing an uh, enormous job in this community. Please help us give her a big round of applause as she closes us out. Thank you so much, Samuel Garvin, for your support. Let's end this show together. I want to give a special shout out before we end to President Kyle Bragg from 32BJ. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. I don't know where he is right now, but I know 32BJ. 32 DJ is in the house, Labor is in the house. Give him a round of applause. They have a march that's about to start right after ours in the Freedom March over the bridge. Hope you all could join us. And to end today's program, we just want to thank everyone for coming out. Thank you for supporting the youth in Brooklyn. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here, for supporting the young people in Brooklyn. We're going to keep fighting for you to ensure that you get what you need in the next fiscal budget, but most importantly, making sure that you're protected through legislation. And I also want to thank SNAPS NYC that organized today's events with my office. Please give Courtney a round of applause. I don't know where she is right now, but we want to give a round of applause for helping us to organize today's Nation American Caucus. 
Girls for Gender Equity, Haiti Culture Exchange, GMAC, Elite, Global Kids, the Kappas, Alphas. the Alphas, and Bridging the Gap at Brooklyn Commons. Okay, if I forgot anybody, blame my head, not my heart. Okay? All right. Cool? And fill out the census. Did everybody here fill out the census? Who filled out the census? It's okay if you didn't fill it out. Okay. You have time to fill it out. You could do it over the phone or you could do it online. So if you need help filling out the census, Kaylee Nalasco from my office, raise your hand. You can come up here, meet Kaylee. She's gonna ensure that you have support to fill out the census. I see my chairman from the beat, join us. Council member, Danique Miller from the Queens. Join us up here, join us up here. He is the BLAC chair for the city council and he is fighting for you with his co-chair, Adrian Adams. I'm so happy to see him here. We're gonna give him 60 seconds to speak. And then we're gonna close out with Asia Williams, who's gonna sing a song. He's gonna put on a mask real quick. Give council member Isaac Williams a round of applause. Peace and blessing, family. Happy Juneteenth. So I, I know that many of us, as we look around, think that this is a new phenomenon, right? And if, if you if you migrated from the south, then you know that this was part of our history. For, for my parents, my mom that grew up in North Carolina, the only time that she would talk about this painful history was on Juneteenth, right? And so as we talk about this moment as we, that we're witnessing now, and that many people are attempting to kind of feel this experience, rage that we had, sometimes it's just not possible. Sometimes, for our allies, we need you to just stand with us, just fall back. Let us have our moment of outrage. Give us the moment to support, not suppress our, our desire to address our oppressors. And that is the moment that we're in now. And so this uncomfortable truth, this truth that crushed the earth has risen again because of George Floyd, because of all the injustices that we've seen, this truth cannot be co-opted. This truth belongs to each and every one of you. This right. truth is manifested in the soul of black folk. That's what Juneteenth is. To our allies, stand with us. Stand beside us. But give us this moment, because black lives do matter. This truth, this moment, this truth is evident, self-evident, that black lives do matter. Black lives matter. Peace and blessings. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the program, we have more for you on Monday, June 22nd. Council member Farrah Lewis is co-sponsoring the Bridging the Gap event at the Brooklyn, at Brooklyn Commons, 495 Flatbush Avenue, from 3 to 5 p.m. Bridging the Gap, Monday, June 22nd, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And now, Asia Williams.
on behalf of Councilmember Farrah Lewis and all our sponsors and the members of the um, caucus, we thank you all for coming out. We encourage you to participate in the various Juneteenth events. Some of us are going to march down to Barclays right now to join up with other groups. We encourage you to come out. Thank you very much, Councilmember Farrah Lewis. Thank you, staff, for your extraordinary work. God bless you. Stay safe. And enjoy your Juneteenth. all volunteers and staff to the front so we can take a group picture. If you have on your Juneteenth shirt, everybody hold up your signs and let's get this picture. For media, thank you so much for coming. We truly appreciate you.